I'm a, from Dublin. I'm based in Dublin. I'm a freelance journalist and a writer, and I also teach creative writing classes. And today I'm just going to give you some tips for creating, for writing creative content, for blog posts, for articles, for whatever type of content that you have. So I'm going to share some tips with you today. And I'm going to share my screen now because I have a few slides for you for, to share, if that's okay. That's, there you go. Okay, yeah, that's it, isn't it? Okay, so journalism writing. When, you, when you're learning journalism, you are taught about, you have to write a story using the five W's. So the, the, using the five W's, it gives your story structure and it gives you the framework to, to write the story or the article the right way. So the five W's are who, what, when, why, and where. And this is important. And you can use this even in an article, a post, a social media post, and for writing your stories. So how would you use this? So like, who is, the, who is your audience? What is, who is it about? What's happened? What's the event? When is it going to happen? Why is it important to your readers? And where is it? And I suppose a lot of stuff now is virtual. So a lot of our, of our, our articles and writing and things that we're doing are online and webinars. So that's your location. So it's who, what, when, why, and where. And also when you're learning journalism, you are told to use the five W's and the H. And the H is how did it happen? Now you don't always have to use this, but if you were using this in a piece of writing or an article, for instance, if I was writing about um, Alzheimer's, I would add in a little timeline box or a fact box and just add a little bit more information like perhaps statistics in Ireland with Alzheimer's and maybe statistics in the States. And it just adds a little bit more information to your story. So that's what the five W's is, is all about when you're writing in journalism. And I think every story and article always has to have a beginning, a middle and an end. I mean, that's very important, no matter what, where, what way you're writing, whether it's a post on social media, whether it's an article for LinkedIn or whether it's a story for your website. So, and this is just an example of the five W's. It's a nice, cute post. So who put us here? What is the solution? When did we get here? Where are we? And why did we get here? So that is why the five W's is very important. It gives you the framework for your story or your article. Okay, so another, another way to add color to your writing is by using your five senses. And that's your sound, sight, smell, touch, and taste. It's really important. If, if you were working in the music industry, and you were, you know, you were given a review about a band, an event or something, you would use all these and it would make your writing much more colorful and nicer to read. And even if you were in the food industry and you were, you know, you were talking about food, you would use these as well. I mean, for instance, instead of saying the burger was delicious, you could add just a little bit of color by saying the burger with its melted cheese, red tomatoes, crisp lettuce, in between a fresh bun, made my mouth water and stomach grumble. It sounds a lot better than just saying the burger was delicious, I think anyway. So that's just an example of using your five senses when you're writing. Also, here's just a few little tips. So an article, when I write an article for people, I do a bit of ghostwriting. I can write an article, it can be about 500 words, 800 words or a thousand words. And you can just repurpose that for social media posts. So you're getting more content from that article. I did a bit of ghostwriting recently for an influencer, influencer in the UK. And she wanted an article written on Clubhouse, the new phenomena. So I, she sent me a video and I wrote the article from the video. So she had an article and then she used that for social media posts. So she repurposed it. So it's a great way to repurpose and you've got content then for perhaps two weeks or so. So this is just another way you can use your article or your blog post for adding more content. And I think personally, I think you should avoid long sentences when you're writing, use shorter ones. When you're reading something really long, you tend to kind of go off it a little bit. If it's shorter, it's much easier to read and people will stay on your page and it's good for SEO. So I find writing, every platform is different. Uh, Twitter is very short and concise and I find it very difficult to write for Twitter because I want to write more. And I think there's a few writers here today and they probably agree with me. It's very hard just to stick to the few hundred characters 
I always want to write more. So Twitter is a, a specific way to write. So it's, it's easy or it's hard. It's hard for me. I love a thesaurus and I love synonyms. It's another way to get a lovely, a nice word for a word that you're using for something different. So I think make friends with your thesaurus. It's a great way to get more words. I think adding an image to your post or article is fantastic. And sometimes just an image with a caption or a really catchy headline is enough. And you don't need to write a real word you post with that. Just put that up there as, it's, as, it's, as it is. I think also readers like to answer questions on social media. So if you put a question on social media, just let people comment or else maybe you can do a poll. And then in your comments, you could probably write an article from the comments and there's your post, there's your blog post, there's your article written from the comments. I think it's a really good way to write a piece. I think also by sharing a little bit about yourself, about you, it humanizes your brand. Be personal, share your story, tell people a, you know, a bit of background about yourself, why not? It might inspire someone else to do the same. Um, so also I write elevator pitches and I think this has been a really big, um, big job for me at the minute because everyone's online and you've got to pitch what you're doing. So a really good one and a, a basic one and a really good one is really important. And I, I've got two examples here of my own um, elevator pitch. So a basic one, I'm a freelance writer. I also write content for SMEs. Let me help you in this area, contact me today. It's very, very basic. Um, I mean, just to add a little bit of color to that, you can just say, I'm a freelance writer and content creator. If you're struggling with finding the right words for your brand, I can help. I will guide you to find your voice through the written word, share your product pr uh, creatively. And contact me today and let's begin your vision through the power of words. I think it adds a little bit more color. So being a bit more descriptive in your elevator pitch, in your writing, it, it, it adds more, doesn't it? I think it's better to be just to be a bit more descriptive. So I think people sometimes don't know where to begin writing. And I think during the pandemic, I've seen a lot of people talking about starting gratitude journals, um, which has been really big. And also morning pages, which is a daily practice that Julia Cameron does um, in her book, The Artist's Way. And Stephen McDonough was the guest last month and he actually does the morning pages. So it's getting up and writing lots of, just writing in the morning and just writing a few pages on whatever's in your head. So putting it out there. There are two daily practices you can do. So your gratitude journal and your morning pages. But if you don't know where to start, here's just a couple of writing prompts if you wanted to start writing. And I use this in my creative writing classes. So even just write down five moments in your life and write a paragraph in each or write a letter to somebody or write about somebody who's influenced you. You'd be surprised how much you can, you can write. I mean, even if you start with a paragraph, you want to keep writing, just keep going. So there are just a few ways to begin writing if you don't know where to start. So to kind of sum up about writing creative content, I think when you're writing articles, when you're writing social media posts, when you're writing your blogs, just know who your audience is. How is your piece of writing going to be of value to the reader? And I think write in your own voice. Don't copy and paste. Write the way you speak because people will know if, you, if you're not being authentic. And I think you can use cultural references. We had St. Patrick's Day this week. There was lots of stuff about that, you know, Thanksgiving in the States. I think be specific in your writing. Know what you're writing about. Don't ramble on. Make friends with your thesaurus. I love a thesaurus and I love the synonyms. Just for getting different words. Use your five W's. Show, don't tell, the five senses. So maybe perhaps when you're writing your next article the next time or your blog post, have a notebook beside you. Write your five W's. Write your five senses and see if you can put a different kind of post together or if, if it will help you create a more descriptive creative content. And that is the end of it. And I know there's a few writers here today, so I hope we we'll probably hear some feedback now. And I hope this helps. And if you want to contact me at all, I'm on LinkedIn and I'm, um, yeah, I'm on social media. Thank you.